Hey everybody, Wyatt Andrews Workshop here, and welcome back to another episode of Orwell Zoo. Um, today we're going to check out some of the other exhibits we've built for the zoo that don't include Southeast Asia, because I'm still working on that. Well, actually, no, um, not right now, because I have a secret project that um, I'm spending the next couple weeks on that I'm super excited to show you guys. Um, so Southeast Asia is on hold, but we do have a couple other exhibits in Orwell Zoo that um, I can just show you guys around, just because I, you know, still want to get videos out, because I really enjoy making them. So um, we're back at the entrance area. Um, for context, we just did the Seal Harbor last episode. Um, then we're gonna come down the main road of the zoo and um, see what's down there. So um, first um, and foremost, we have this little sign area. So we have a map and then we have these little um, animal signs by Just Goron that he made for his Beaks of Berrigan project. Um, but I think they look amazing, um, and they work pretty much anywhere, so I just thought, like, it'd be a great way to just sort of stick some, um, animal imagery up front. Maybe this is, like, sort of, um, focusing on, like, different, like, um, exhibits in the zoo, maybe, like, feeding schedules or something like that. Um, but actually, um, pretty soon I'll be replacing this map, um, with an actual map or not an actual map, but one I'll be designing for Orwell Zoo because um, I'm finally free of GeForce Now because I got um, a brand new GPU just yesterday. So I'll finally be able to um, access online content as well as um, the images for the billboards. So that'll be super exciting. It'll definitely be um, a, good, a good motivator creatively. All right, so moving down, um, we get our, I guess, second exhibit, because you would probably go to the seals first. Um, flamingos. Our, yeah, our second exhibit is flamingos. What are you doing? <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, a pretty simple pool and kind of a, um, kind of a pit display. Um, the um, update with the um, water color um, slider was really useful for this because you'll notice um, most flamingo pools at zoos are um, pretty mucky, but it's not like um, dangerous for the birds or anything. It's just that's just what color it is because there's usually dozens of these guys walking around and doing their business, so it's going to get a little gross no matter how hard you clean it and filter it and stuff. Um, and then there's the clock tower, as usual, providing some, some really nice views of the zoo as a whole. Um, and then this is the reptile house, but we're not actually going to look inside yet, because I, <laughs> I barely started it, to be honest. Um, J&B Reptile World. I don't know what J&B is. It's supposed to be a sponsor, but, um, I just thought, like, it, it sounded nice. It was, like, a nice sort of, um, acronym style, like, um, well, not an acronym, but, like, it just sounded official. It sounded like a brand that would be sponsoring this reptile house. So we'll come, we'll come over to this in a future episode. And then over here we have um, a carousel. This was, I think, entirely by, um, well, no, Mr. Domez made the um, top, like the cover for it, and then Silent Member made the um, carousel itself. Really, really cool. Um, I thought it fit, like, amazingly in this project just because, um, you know, every every zoo has a carousel, at least in the United States. And um, I thought, like, um, there was something missing here. It was just a sort of big, empty section of trees. And once I threw this in, it was like, mwah, perfect. And yeah, coming back down here, um, we'll come through this little square area. And um, you might be able to tell um, what's over here, given the... Um, enrichment item in the back but um this is the um house for what we're about to see the um holding shelter so um staff could come in here and this would also be where they would um i figure they would um it's giraffes okay because <laughs> i can't explain it without um without mentioning the giraffes um i figure they would um whenever they're moving the giraffes out, they would put the giraffes in a crate, they would train them to get used to that, and then um, they would come out of this um, outdoor gate. Or, if we come through here, this is a service road, they would get them out through here. That might be a little complicated just because this is this is the main yard of the exhibit, and um, 
it would I think it would be much more convenient to do it through here but this is another access point if need be and then something I wanted to show off last episode but completely forgot was um, the back side of the seal exhibit is um, completely like smoothed off like it's just it's just concrete um, compared to the like detailed rock work on the other side I just thought it was a really neat detail that I completely forgot to show off last episode so moving on um, this um, house was directly based on the um, Houston Zoo's giraffe habitat, um, the barn that is. Um, I really love how it looks um, up against everything. And then coming through here in the main courtyard of the clock tower, then we'll come, okay, then we'll come past um, this little nature path, um, some benches, some of my potted plants. And then, uh, there we go. This is the um, main savanna yard. So, um, I really love how this looks. Um, so this is the this is the main savanna yard, and, um, oh, yep, I just wanted to talk about these. Um, I made my own signs, just because I couldn't access the billboards. Use just Goron's, um, well now they're made of font pieces. I was gonna say art shapes, but they're uh, made of font pieces. And I'll probably keep these, to be honest. They, they, they look really good. Um, and yeah, as you can see, they share it with ostriches. Um, there's a little, um, there's a little, like, area where um, they would have, like, scheduled feedings for the giraffes. You could come up there. Um, and then there's a um, picnic pavilion over there that I haven't really done much with, but we'll get there when we get there. Um, and then I made this back in March, and... Um, it was one of the first times where I had used the um, these big um, dead trees I'd made for my climbing structures as actual just logs in the exhibit. Um, that caught the attention of a lot of people, um, namely Rubel, who um, saw it and um, um, told me um, he wanted stuff like this in Tivoli, and that's sort of how we ended up sort of working together. So um, it's definitely helped helped me out a lot um, in terms of um, sort of networking and stuff like that. So um, yeah, we have a little pool here, um, doing some rock work. Um, this sort of setup was based on the um, San Francisco Zoo. They have a lot of these like gnarly logs lying around in this big um, savanna yard. And then this was, speaking of techniques that I used in Tivoli, this was also um, one of the um, times I used the um, crowberry bushes to sort of accentuate the, um, the like trails these animals create as they walk through the exhibit. So you'll notice like, um, I use the long grass and then I put crowberry on top of it and then you get to dirt and then you get to sand. And that's sort of like the most um, trampled part of the exhibit. That's sort of just a rule of thumb that I go by. And then, um, I have these like kind of islands of foliage sprinkled throughout the exhibit where there's like rock and then there's like sort of the larger trees and bushes. Um, so there's just a lot of um, principles you use in large um, of stockyards like these. And then to get a better look at this um, giraffe barn. Um, hey, the giraffes actually can't make it through here, so I put this guy inside and then I put this guy inside of the, um, the actual barn. I haven't done anything on the inside, but. Um, I'll probably have to because um, I did all of this detail work, so I'll have to do something with it in the future. And then, oh, this is taking a long time because I'm, I haven't got out of Tejid Cam. We'll come down through here. Actually, we'll just get out of Tejid Cam. Oh, oh, wait. There we go. Okay. It's kind of an awkward episode, but whatever. Um, so yeah, here's how it looks from above. Um, again, the sort of natural trails looking really good from up here. And then we'll move back down, and um, I haven't done anything with this yet, but um, coming through here, we have a slender-tailed meerkat exhibit. Um, pretty soon I'll be able to um, actually put them inside if that um, leak is anything to go by. So I won't talk too much about that, lest the Frontier get angry at me. Um, but yeah, this is a pretty simple implied exhibit. Um, I think I based this setup off the Cincinnati Zoo. Well, I don't know, because the Cincinnati Zoo has something like this, where they have a flamingo exhibit like overlooking the giraffe exhibit, but mine has meerkats. So 
same idea, just sort of a double view that a lot of modern zoos employ. And then um, there's the picnic pavilion. I took um, Domez's carousel cover and then just sort of doubled the size of it and recolored it. Um, and I think it looks um, amazing from like over here and um, sort of coming through, poking over the giraffe exhibit, as well as um, when you're in the seal exhibit through here, you can see it from there also. Um, there's just a ton of great vistas in the zoo that I'm super proud of. And then um, some of Josh's um, picnic benches. So yeah, um, a pretty simple, um, pretty simple build. Um, over here I'll have, um, this is where the Afro, or the whole Africa section is gonna be. So we'll have like a big, an even larger savanna yard over here for like rhinos and stuff. And then um, we'll have like the fennec fox and the, um, Probably the African penguin. I'm not sure. Um, we'll see how well it'll fit up against everything else, but um, I'm super excited to get that stuff done. And then, um, yeah, there's um, that's gonna be um, a desert dome. I have a buddy of mine actually working on that right now. Um, so I'm pretty much just sort of showing off everything um, I can while um, I'm both working on the secret project and then also while well, my buddy's working on this desert dome. Um, so then we can get back to this um, big final cherry on top for the um, Southeast Asian section in the future. So yeah, I'll see you guys in whatever comes first and have a good one.